In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. There's a story I'd, I want to share with you, and it's about a woman who became unrecognizable. And she writes, I experienced this for myself and remember it because it frightened me. I became an animal. This sinful experience occurred, as so do many, around the occasion of a dinner party. It was a hot August afternoon and I was having 10 people over for dinner that evening. No one was giving me a bit of help and I was, of course, feeling like a victim, as everyone does in a hot kitchen on an August day. It is important to remember that the angry person's habit of self-justification is often connected to his habit of seeing himself as a victim. I had been chopping, stirring, bending over a low flame, and all, done, and all alone, alone by myself. The oven's heat was my purgatory and my crucible. My mother and my children thought this was a good time for civil disobedience. They positioned themselves in the car and refused to move until I took them swimming. Now my children were at the tender ages of seven and four at that time, but my mother was 78 years old, and except for her daily habit of verbal iron pumping, properly described as infirm, they leaned on the horn and shouted my name out the window, well within hearing of the neighbors, reminding me of my promise to take them swimming. There are certain times when a popular cliché degorges itself from the dulled setting of over, overuse and becomes to life as the way this one was. I lost it. I lost myself. I jumped on the hood of the car. I pounded on the windshield. I told my mother and my children that I was never ever going to take them anywhere and that none of them were ever going to have one friend in the house of my, in any house of mine until the hour of their death which I said I hoped was soon. I couldn't stop pounding on the windshield. Then a frightening thing happened. I became like a bird, a crow. I developed a murderous beak. Greasy black feathers took the place of my arms as I flapped and flapped. I blotted out the sun's light with my flapping. And each time my beak landed near my victims, it was near my children, on the windshield, but it was really my beak on their necks, and I went back for more. The taste of their blood entranced me, and I wanted to peck forever. I wanted to carry them off. I don't mean this figuratively. I became that bird. I had to be forced to get off the car and stop pounding on the windshield. Even then, I didn't come back to myself. When I did, I was appalled. I realized I had genuinely frightened my children mostly because they could no longer recognize me. My son said to me, I was scared because I didn't know who you were. In today's gospel reading, we hear about two demoniacs who were, as some contemporary people might say, possessed, or maybe they had a mental disability. But no matter what the cause of their problem was, there was one thing that was very sure and it's that they were angry. They were not who they were supposed to be or called to be by God because of their anger. If you look at your life and at yourself and you say, who am I? I don't know how many people ever think that in the morning when they look in the mirror. It's usually, oh, look at, you know, oh, I got to cover that up or where did that come from? That's something new. But how many times do we look in the mirror and really say, who are we? Am I really what God has called me to be? Or am I angry and am I disfigured and am I preventing myself from seeing God? You know, if you think about the, today the church is a beautiful, uh, has a beautiful understanding of how to link gospel readings together. And if you read the gospel reading for this morning, um, which is the early morning gospel for the Orthro service, it speaks about Jesus on the road to Emmaus when he's on the road and the disciples are, are walking with him and they didn't recognize him until he broke the bread. Then they recognized him and he disappeared. Why didn't they recognize him? Because sometimes our anger and our defeat prevent us from recognizing God. And likewise, 
our own anger and our own frustrations in our life can prevent us, more importantly, from having God flow within us. You see, it's so easy to get lost within ourselves, but it's very difficult to get lost within God because many times we cut ourselves short. We become frustrated. We become something very ugly. And if you think of the demoniacs in the Gospel reading today, they were people who were feared and no one would walk near them. Why? Because they were angry, because they were fighting, they were a terror to the people. But if you think about it, we don't really see people's heads spinning around like on the Exorcist movie. But how many times do we see people in our daily life that we just want to skirt around? Why? Because they're angry. They're angry at us. They're angry about something, a a grudge somewhere, or something that's unresolved. Or maybe the frustration of what they have become or not have become. So many times in our lives, we steer around them. But what does God tell us to do? He tells us to be the beacon of his light and his love, of his forgiveness and of his strength. So that as Christ walked up to the demoniacs, the devil feared him and saw Christ coming and the demons immediately said, did you come to torment us and send us into, uh, into pain? And then they begged him to be cast into the herd of swine. Now, if you look back at the early Jewish traditions of the understanding of pigs, the only way a demon could be cast out of a person was to be cast into a pig. Now, that might seem kind of strange for us, but in the early Jewish tradition, that was the only way that a demon was considered dead. So no matter what was going on with these two people, The demons were cast into the swine and the swine jumped over the cliff. This whole herd of swine that probably belonged to one of the the owners in the area went over the cliff and drowned in, in the water. And that's a sign and a reminder to us that our life, we should never fear evil. We should never fear being in contact or skirting around something that is going to be dangerous for us, or that a person who could be angry or aggravated with us. But we have to confront them with God's love, with God's strength, knowing that he will give us the power to defeat the demons and the power to overcome any evil in our life. If you think about your life and if there was a person to walk around in the church or to be in the church, even sitting next to you. Would you know if that was Christ? Would you know if that was God? As we see in the hospitality of Abraham, the icon in the center, the very top above the the cross there, you see there's three angels and there's Abraham and Sarah sitting there. And that is when the Holy Trinity appeared to them. Now, it didn't appear with angels with wings but it appeared as three visitors, three people who came to the house and Abraham said, you look like travelers that are weary. Come sit down. And then as he opened his heart, God revealed to him that he had appeared in all forms, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to Abraham. So that icon is actually the icon of the Holy Trinity that we have. But how many times do we open our heart to the Holy Trinity? How many times do we walk around with a grudge or anger or disfigure ourselves with our own frustrations in our lives? The Gospel readings for today, all of them, all of the readings for today, reference a change of disposition on the inside. A change from anger, from frustration, dejection, all those things that we feel sometimes on a daily level to a changing to embrace God to cast out those things inside of us that might drag us down, to cast out even the evil in others by our presence of God within us, and to take a new step and a new walk in life. Don't be afraid is something that, that I've learned on a deeper level these past few months, but that I share with you because God's power is nothing 
that we should ever fear or anything in this world we should fear as long as we have God's power and grace with us. The strength within us is actually God's strength. And the stronger we feel, the stronger relationship and the tie we have with God. And as, as I reminded the couple yesterday who, are, who were just married and the, the groom is going to Iraq to serve in two weeks. And as I told them, it's going to be a difficult time. But the most important thing to remember is as they walked around the table, to remember that their lives revolve around God's words, as do ours, as we have in the baptismal service where we go around the baptismal font as a remembrance that our lives revolve around God. If we stray from that, we stray from God, we stray from God's power, we stray from God's strength, and then we fear. Because what is more terrorizing to a small child than to be alone in the dark? But as Christ says, I am the light of the world, and he who walks with me does not walk in darkness, but has the light everlasting. I pray that on this day where it's very hot outside and that you're tested with your frustrations, not only in anything that you might do outdoors, but even sitting in your car waiting for your children to be quiet as your car cools down, I pray that you disband with your anger, disband with your frustrations, and reach out to God and try to see his face. Because even as the disciples, those blessed 12 that walked with God, and were there from the beginning of his ministry when he died and came out of the tomb and told the myrrh-bearing women, go tell my disciples that I have risen. They walked with him to another city side by side as he opened the scriptures to them and they did not recognize him. His own disciples, three years every single day of their life, spent with Christ He's gone for three days and they don't recognize him. How much more difficult is it going to be for each and every one of us who have not walked with Christ each and every day of our life to just take a break? Take a break with our anger. Take a break with all those things that pull us down and expect to recognize him again. And when do we expect to recognize him? When we need him. When I need God is when I will ask for him. That is so many times what I see, not only in hospital settings, but at funerals and other places where people are in struggle. I'll get God when I need him. But how do we recognize him? He's always there, but we have the difficulty recognizing him because we put on the blinders ourselves. We disfigure ourselves. Our face and our own sin and the ability to see clearly what God has prepared for us, we disfigure our own vision so that we can't even figure out who's good, who's bad, and who Christ really is. So think about tonight as you look in the mirror, as you brush your teeth. Hopefully you brush your teeth before you go to bed. As you look in the mirror, think to yourself, who am I? Can I see God? Can I see God within me? Can I see God within my fellow people? If you look around the church, what do you see? Do you see people you don't like? Do you see people that aggravate you? Or do you see God sitting next to you in small little pieces just waiting to grow? I pray that he grows in you and that he continues to give you strength and most of all, the ability to see. Amen.